You have to be patient and have perseverance and having a sense of where you want to go and having the passion to still believe in your idea even when everybody else is saying, well, why are you wasting your time on this? It obviously is not, it's not, it's not happening, but you know it's going to happen. You just don't, you, know, you never give up on that idea. I think what's great about the truly transformative inventions and the entrepreneurial ideas that really end up having a, a significant impact is they start relatively small and most people don't quite understand even what you're talking about. And they take some time before they get traction, but eventually they break through and the impact's far broader than anybody you know, could have imagined. Entrepreneurs who want to change the world, who want to have a significant impact, don't want to just build a company, they want to build an industry, don't want to just create another product or service, they really want to fundamentally improve aspects of, of the people's lives. The people started these great companies. They just think out solutions on their own to problems. You don't do it the way it's been done before. That's in a book. You go out and you try something new because you think it, that you'll be able to make it work. The great business icons, it's not that they were worth hundreds of millions or billions or trillions of dollars, is that they moved society forward. Whatever their motivations, whatever it was, they being here, their lust for success, for power, for money, for fame, moved us forward. Every great business leader I've ever met, in addition to being very smart, very driven, they have this, why not me? Screw it, I deserve it, let's go. And if you don't have that, you can't achieve greatness. With all the great entrepreneurs, it was a mix of believing in an idea, but they also recognized that they had to do some things to take that idea and make it real. It probably comes early in an entrepreneur's life where you realize you're willing to do things in the business world that other people aren't willing to do. Everybody has got ideas and everybody's got ambitions, but most people aren't willing to cross that line. And I think an entrepreneur that's successful, that's your nature. Wherever there's change, wherever there's uncertainty, there's opportunity. You have to be able to take risks. You can't have greatness in anything without putting it on the line. Otherwise, everybody would have it. If there was no loss, if there was no chance of tremendous failure or tremendous setback, you can't have the upside. There is no success without risk taking. And I think that is actually what distinguishes the captains of industry from others. You have to be smart, you have to have vision, you have to have all of these different things. But the most successful people are the people that had the right idea but never ever quit or gave up. The people that really succeed in life are those that don't quit. People react to failure in one of two ways. Either they get scared and give up or they take that failure that as a learning experience, and they kind of use that experience to redouble their efforts. I guarantee if these guys were alive today, they wouldn't be telling you about their successes. They'd be telling you about their early failures or the places they almost failed. That's the great motivator, and you have to be able to embrace that. If you can't embrace both failure or the possibility of failure or the tremendous fear of failure, you can't be wildly successful. It's just, it's an axiomatic truth. One striking thing about Carnegie, and this is true of the great entrepreneurs, they're willing to take risks. They're willing to roll the dice and bet, in later days, the whole corporation, or in this case, bet his career. Most people are too busy looking on the outside to really check what their barometers say inside. So as an entrepreneur, if you look inside, you'll find things that they all need that could become immensely popular if someone had the courage to promote it or to build it. Every business has some uniqueness, either a unique talent, unique product, unique capacity, and the trick is to find it and capitalize on it. We are always looking for the next innovation, the next niche, the next product improvement, the next service improvement. You're always trying to get better. He's looking into the future. He looks across the Mississippi and he sees a bridge and he's able to see that future and then willing to have enough confidence in his vision to put everything he's got into it 
and he's willing to convince others that he knows what that future is going to be. When it finally does break through, it, it is sort of gratifying because you, you're starting to see the reality of what you always believe, that, that the vision you had that someday the world would be different is starting to move in that direction. If you were in a well-run company, competing against other well-run companies, you're, you're coming up with ideas to jump them. You're going to be thinking, they might do this, I'm going to do this. Business, in the end, is understanding the playing field. Tell me who's on it, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and what is your checkmate play to top them and nail them. And so you're always in that competitive game. You're looking at innovation. You're looking at leapfrogging, trying to get ahead of them. You're never complacent. You're semi-paranoid about what they're doing. That's what a game is all about. Oftentimes I'm asked, do you have to be ruthless to be very successful? And I say, you do not have to be ruthless. You have to be smart. Smart is the key word. You have to be smart. I never like to look back. I'm a very forward-thinking person and a very positive-thinking person. And the transactions that I did or did not do, I very rarely have any remorse over the situation. I like to move on. All that matters is how big do you want to dream and how hard do you want to work?